racing simulator provided by Next Level Racing and their new 2-in-1 F1 GT cockpit. Whether you like the upright GT seating position or low slung F1 seating position, the F1 GT has you covered at a price that won't break the bank. Learn more at nextlevelracing.com. Okay, here we go. Eight lap race around the Dragon Trail. Not to be confused with the Dragon Tail in North Carolina. Starting 20th against the best AI that GT Sport has to offer. At least for this moment. Until some updates come out. <laughs> Not saying there's anything wrong with it, I'm just saying modern uh, video games. Never in a state of done. So, this is the state of it at this moment. This moment being day one of GT Sport Beta. Rubbin's racing, come on. Something that's tough is I don't really know where this guy's at because there's no proximity arrows here in GT Sport. Or at the very least, I haven't found them. So you're really guessing where that guy is at. Hopefully I picked the right braking spot. With all these uh, fictional tracks, it's kind of tough early on to know where exactly you need to be braking at. And that is me slowing up a little bit artificially because I know from experience of driving other cars at this track, the AI doesn't go through that bus stop as quickly as I do. Oop. Okay, well, at least that beetle wasn't there. That is something that I've been experiencing on pretty much all the real wheel drive cars. As I see those beetles trying to make a move in my rear view camera. They can get really snap oversteer um, on throttle, even well off the corner. So you have to really be careful with how much wheel angle you put into the car. And then they also break here too, which I don't necessarily have to. So you gotta be careful how much wheel angle you put into the car and then just how much gas you give as well. So yeah, kind of a, uh, Oh man, yeah, it's up better than me. They also break here early. So kind of a feature that, uh, the driving that I'm not in love with at the moment. Hey, there's a car there. Hey, there's a car there. There he is. Don't really know where he's at until you pick him up on the rear camera. First gear, why not? Make up some positions here through this awesome section of this track. All over the curves, all over the curves, out to this curb, and then braking so I don't run over the AI. Which I kind of have to, because even though I will say that uh, GT Sport does have still have some of the classic GT uh, bumper, bumper car physics, attributes, what have you. That higher damage model that we selected for this race, uh, it will show up. Not really physically, but you can run into the back of someone and then pretty much your car is not gonna run after that. Ooh. Guy kicking up some dirt in front of me. One thing that I don't think I really have to say here, but here I go. Uh, I am thoroughly impressed how pretty this game is. Especially I'm running just on the basic PlayStation 4. Yep, I'm gonna do that. 
Oh, too much curve. Don't need to get on the backside. But yeah, I mean, this thing just looks really good, and it's amazing how far um, the graphics have come. I remember driving GT Sport back at E3 2016, and they were going on and on about the graphics and all that, and I could see that, like, the textures and the shaders, oh man, came back on me. That was pretty cool. Um, I can see they were good, but man, it looked like it needed some serious anti-aliasing. It was really choppy. Oh, I wish I drove faster there. It was really choppy. And um, it's just so much more improved now. I mean, everything looks really smooth. I mean, it's, it's kind of one of those things where I want to say, this looks great for, for the console, especially the basic console now with uh, that both have the upgrades, but I don't know if that's doing this justice. It might look great, period. I mean, it's very, let's just say, very impressed. Very impressed in its final form, and it's one thing for them to say it's going to be great, and put out all these pictures, and then videos, you don't know what they've done to the videos, but here we are with the beta, a week away from the actual game being out, and this thing is truly uh, living up to the hype in terms of the graphics. And some other graphical things like pictures and stuff like that, but we'll cover that another day. For now, we're just doing a race and doing okay. Woohoo! That was tight. I feel like the uh, tires are starting to give up a little. Can't go as hard around that corner. Nope, don't do it. Ah, not my favorite attribute right there. That kind of shows, that kind of rears up when you have tire physics that are very hard. It makes them very unforgiving. That's kind of what you're experiencing there. Tire physics that are have that sidewall flex in the tires, something we've talked about a lot here on the show here recently, because I think it's the best way to explain it. When it has that flex and it feels like rubber, you're able to get away with maybe putting a little more wheel into it or getting on the gas a little early and then catching the rear end and stuff like that. When the tires are hard, I mean, it makes the game tougher because you gotta be just so perfect. And you just cannot excite those, those rear tires. I'm getting a little bit of that. Ah, uh, it's so nice to be able to drive through that corner properly without worrying about running over AI there. Hey, best sector. I will say, I love hearing the old GT sounds. Um, you know, my history, I played a ton of GT4, and I have not, really haven't played the last two. But just the sounds and, oh, it's not, that, was, that wasn't very good. Oh, that's not very good either, come on. Just hearing some of those classic sounds, and there's other parts in the games where they really shine through. It's just so, so much fun. So much fun, so... Uh, it's just some parts of this game that are just so Japanese, and it's kind of awesome. It's just a different feel from things like Forza, which, are, which is American-made. So it's not quite as, you know, you, I see it as American, I'm like, okay, I would do that. But then you get to a Japanese developed game and this is stuff that you wouldn't think of. You know what, I think we might have hurt the car a bit on that last impact. Because it seems to be running kind of slow. I should have easily been up to 6th gear. A 
Well, life just got harder as I totally dive bomb. He's gonna come back. And I think his car is actually properly running. <sighs> well, well, that was pretty argy bargy. So was that. I do like that little sound though, when I went over to the back of the rumble strip, it gave kind of a chassis flex. Oh, I think he's on the inside of me. Well, the AI might not be very good at a couple of these corners, but they sure get through there well. I just haven't felt comfortable enough on these on the brakes to really dive into that corner. Oh, too hard, too hard. Had to throw down a gear just to engine brake myself there. So since my car is struggling, let's talk about this wheel. Day one with the TGT. I do have all the force feedback turned up. And it is. Whew. It's got some strength to it. Not only that, it has some strength, and then um, it's, it's pretty darn smooth. And then the other thing that's really stood out, as I try to be better putting the power down here. It has really good rumble effects. Um, I think there's times where it's like, I'm getting rumble right now, and I don't know if I really should be getting rumble then. But it's very strong, and it's, it's, it, it's, it's so strong that I'm like getting some rumble down in my feet and almost feeling it like in the back of my, my seat, which is kind of wild. Bit of a new experience for me with that. I don't know if I've ever really noticed that, but it, uh, it has a very well put together feel. It's not like, it's, it's not a rattle, it's a rumble. Uh, which is nice, because some wheels can get pretty, oh, ran too wide there, can get pretty rattly. <laughs> I was trying to time that. I don't know if I timed that good enough. But yeah, it's not a rattle, it's a rumble, and that's, uh, that's good to feel. So hard, but so important to put the power down there. That reminds me of the last corner at Fuji. How it kind of has an uphill to it. Almost a little bit of camber. You guys are gaining on me with my hurt engine. And I had to die the first gear because I almost missed the braking zone as I was looking into my rearview camera. Okay. According to that red blinky thing at the top corner, we're on the last lap. It's the time to make some hay here. Man. I'm doing it. Ooh, maybe. These S's, these S's are really fun. Because kind of puts you on the limit, especially when the car feels like it starts to slide around. Oh no! I saw them coming. Is there someone inside me? There is! Come back here. Oh, damn it. Stuck behind him. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, leaders cross the finish line. What is this, the Lambo coming up on us now? We didn't get close enough. Come on. Come on! Now I gotta make myself real wide. 
<laughs> okay, so there we go. Eight laps, custom race at the Dragon Trail, GT3. Even had, even with some damage, able to come and finish tenth. Um, that wasn't too shabby, guys. That was some decent AI racing there. So, hope you guys enjoyed that, and uh, we'll have more content coming for for GT Sport, not just the beta, but also onto the actual game that'll be out in only a week. So as always, thank you for watching Inside Sim Racing. If you enjoy this video, please give it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Check out our website, isrtv.com, for the latest news, reviews, and our popular forums. Like I said, there'll be plenty more GT Sport news and videos up at our website. Also, check out the Amazon affiliate links in the description below. Click on the link, shop through Amazon. It doesn't cost you a thing, but it's a great way to support what we do here. So again, thanks for watching Inside Sim Racing. I'm John Sable. I'm going to leave you now with the replay, because again, GT Sport is very pretty. Enjoy. <laughs>